Paskazia Kimanuka is 58 years old and she has been forced to flee from her home in eastern Congo along with her six grandchildren. Home now is with thousands of other displaced people. It's the third time Paskazia has had to abandon her village in the last 10 years. How long they will have to stay this time, no one knows. It is them, the M23, who have made us flee a lot of gunfire. We threw all our belongings onto the roads. We abandoned our homes. It's the third time that I flee the M23, that I have become displaced because of the Tutsis. I pray for God to make our government strong so that it can drive out these Tutsi rebels so that we can go home. Paskazia was first displaced in 2012 when the Tutsi-led M23 seized vast areas of North Kivu province. The Congolese president accused its neighbor, Rwanda's Tutsi government, of backing the M23 rebels in order to seize territory and exploit valuable natural resources. The Rwandan government has denied any involvement. The M23 is made up of several thousand Tutsi fighters. They say they are fighting for the rights of their people and deny committing any crimes against civilians. Most of the displaced in these camps are Hutus. The M23 rebel group took control of most of North Kivu in 2012, advancing as far as the provincial capital Goma. A year later, they were pushed back by DRC forces with the help of UN troops. But since March this year, the fighting has escalated close to the border with Rwanda, despite pledges of a ceasefire from both sides. The UN says more than 100 people were killed in Kishishe and Bambo villages at the end of November as part of a campaign of murder, rape, kidnapping and looting. Almost 400,000 people have been displaced in the fighting since earlier this year and reported cases of rape and horrific sexual violence at the hands of the fighters is on the rise. Two years ago, the UN documented over a thousand cases of conflict-related sexual violence in eastern Congo. Congolese human rights activist Dr. Dennis Mokwege, a gynecologist and Nobel Peace Prize winner, treats victims of sexual violence in his hospital close to the fighting. He has called for an end to the endless cycle of war and says the international community must act now. Well, earlier I spoke to the Nobel Peace Prize winner who you just saw in Jamal's piece, Dr. Dennis Mukwege, who's demanding that the United Nations impose sanctions on Rwanda for its alleged support of the M23 rebels, accusations that the Rwandan government has denied. I started by asking him about the current situation in the DR Congo. I think that the situation in the east of Congo, especially in the north Kivu, is extremely uh, critical. This war uh, lasts now for 25 years. More than 6 million of people were killed during this period. And today we, have, we are in the situation that uh, uh, the third of the population of Congo, it means 30 million of people mm. don't have food and the, they don't have protection. Add to this, we have also all the women who are raped. And have you treated some of these women who've been raped? I met some of them in Goma, and the situation is critical, especially for women and girls in the camp where really they need assistance, and uh, we, we are taking care of them. But uh, if the world can just join forces and say we can't at all accept rape as a method of war, Really, what you're describing is a Ukraine war in the heart of Africa that the rest of the world just isn't paying attention to. In Ukraine, Russia is uh, uh, doing the aggression to Ukraine, and in Africa, Rwanda is doing the aggression to Congo. But the way that the international community is treating these two crises is just uh, unacceptable, because I think that we are sharing the, the same humanity. Uh, the way that to mm. treat this question should be the same. We can see uh, in Russia, for example, all the sanctions, uh, economical sanctions, and how the international diplomacy is working together to try to stop this mm. crisis.
just think that this is the way that things should be done. And so instead of criticizing uh, the Rwandan government for these alleged links to the M23 rebels and the financing of their war, this government, the British government, is actually giving money to Rwanda, 120 million pounds and more in order to house asylum seekers who want to stay in Britain. What is your response to this British government policy? I think that all this policy is not acceptable. It's, it's really, it's a way to support a country who is supporting terrorists because what M23 is doing in Congo to kill the people without any defense, to kill children, to rape women, to destroy villages. I think that this is a terrorism. The British government, Dr. McQuaig, has said that Rwanda is a almost a model country, a land of opportunities that needs to be, you know, supported financially. You know, this is a, a, a safe place for asylum seekers, you know, to to stake their claims and to live. Again, that's what the British government are saying. Have they got it wrong? I think that uh, a safe place must respect the human rights, and human rights don't really make a distinction. When you respect the human rights, you have to respect it everywhere. Dr. Dennis McQuaig, thank you very much for your commitment on this particular and very difficult subject. Thank you. Thank you so much.